imagine your history being so bad that you want to ban people from learning it. This you did a little research and discovered that you are of Indian descent, not Native American, Indian, like from India. And you already missed, that's gotta be a world record. Because Newsflash, a prerequisite of criticizing America has never been that you must solve or criticize the problems of whatever country happens to correspond with your ethnicity. Because if that was the case, you wouldn't be able to say shit either. Seeing as black people were, you know, brought here, I'm looking forward to you going to Ancestry.com, finding out exactly what African country your ancestry goes back to, then criticizing that government first before saying shit. You know what's interesting about India? They have the largest number of slaves anywhere on the planet. 18 million people are enslaved in India. So before you go and lecture people with your reasons why critical race theory should be taught in schools and uh, talk to people about their questionable history, let's talk about your questionable present. Well, you're purposely using the highest estimate. And the entirety of your video at this point is just one big red herring considering the fact that slavery in India has nothing to do with this conversation. We could talk about how that report where you got the 18 million figure from also says that there's about 400,000 people living in slavery in the US. We could talk about how the 13th Amendment outlawed slavery except for as a punishment for crime. And would you look at that? We also have the highest incarceration rate in the world with a disproportionate amount of those people being black. <clears throat> Liquid citation. We could talk about how if you're a prisoner getting paid at all, you're going to be making at maximum a whopping 141 an hour doing labor that makes the state billions of dollars a year. And also how Arkansas, Texas, and Georgia don't allow prisoners to get paid at all. And about how the Virginia Supreme Court declared that prisoners were slaves of the state, etc. And that's not even getting into human trafficking. The country with the most slaves in the world. And you're here lecturing Americans who ended slavery within a hundred years of the country becoming a country. And your country's still out there enslaving people. G. Williger, that framing was crazy. A short list of countries that abolished slavery before the United States are Great Britain, Mexico, Haiti, France, Denmark, Chile, Uruguay, Bolivia, Greece, Serbia, Ecuador, Argentina, Peru, Venezuela, Moldavia, Wallachia, and the Netherlands. And that's only in the 1800s. So not only was the U.S. one of the last countries to formally outlaw slavery, countries around the world, including India and the United States, are still actively dealing with slavery. In conclusion, this has been a crash course in why not to believe in American exceptionalism. And once again, even if America didn't currently practice slavery in India did, still doesn't mean you can't criticize America's past. But the first step to actually solving problems is acknowledging that they exist. Sitting back and thinking that the US is the best already or good enough does about as much as what you did with this video. Fuck all. People can openly talk about how much they hate white people, but if a white person says they hate a black person, they're automatically racist and are probably gonna get the cops called on them. There are many more things she said, but I need enough time to debunk this black woman. First of all, turn your stitches on. But that was a little forward. Are you sure you don't want to check that everything that that first person said wasn't bullshit before you leap to defend it? Only look at it in the context of America. Obviously, if you're upholding a traditional America ideas, that includes racism and racist ideology. During Jim Crow, the racist ones were the Democrats, not the conservatives. So when conservatives talk about traditional values, racism is not a part of it. I nope. Let the um black on black crime commence. Wait, wait, did you guys catch that? The racist ones were the Democrats, not the conservatives. All right, all right, quick A push lesson. Democrat, political party, conservative, ideology. So yeah, the Democrats were the racist ones. They were also conservative, hence why the Republicans were the ones pledging to protect black voting rights, while Democrats in the South were embracing white supremacy and calling themselves stuff like the Conservative Party of Alabama. Not to mention, those were Democrats that seceded after the election of a Republican president and fought a war flying a particular flag that now appear at an insurrection that took place in support of a Republican president. Hmm, I wonder if maybe just maybe political parties are complex entities that keep evolving with time, hence why they don't believe the exact same shit they did 150 years ago. However, when black people say they don't like white people, it's coming from a place of trauma really in our experiences not only in our modern day but generational trauma that comes along with it. number one we do not go through any type of trauma today and generational trauma doesn't exist as we debunked multiple times i'm sorry debunked by who oh no i didn't realize that we had to have fucking evidence before we made claims and even if you're scared of talking about generational trauma let me provide a little bit of a thought experiment in the context of american society american history and present day what effect has black people as a demographic saying they don't like white people had on white people okay now, what effect has white people as a demographic saying they don't like black people had on black people? And before the enlightened centrists come in and say, oh, no one should dislike anyone. Yeah, no shit. But there's a difference between believing what things ought to be and realizing that when things like housing have been historically controlled to exclude black people to the greatest extent possible, and then, oh, would you look at that? Black people's median and mean wealth is less than 15% that of white people. Sure, one of them is something that's mean and that you shouldn't do. But not only is the other one mean, it's happened repeatedly and enough to set back an entire demographic of people. When anyone is unjustly killed by an officer, it is not okay, no matter what color you Exactly. Are. But the reason we put emphasis on black people who are shot by the police is because it happens at a higher rate. Yeah, she's right about that. Or is she? Uh, ma'am, looks like you're wrong. She said rate, 
rape. Using the most recent census data, the amount of white people in the country is about six times higher than the amount of black people in the country. So if we're looking at your data table for 2021 and 2020, if everything's happening proportionately, this top number here should be roughly six times as big as this number. Yet for 2021, it was 1.7 times bigger. And for 2020, it was 1.9 times bigger. That's called disproportionality, meaning it's happening at a higher rate. I don't know who said if you don't support BLM, you hate every other race every black person on the planet. But I look forward to your survey of every black person on the planet. I'm gonna say what you black people always say to white people. And yes, hold on tightly to that phrase, you black black people and keep convincing yourself mirrors don't exist. Have a nice night. Well, turn your stitches on. You told him to turn his stitches on, but you turned yours off. So first of all, turn your stitches on. Joel, you've now made two videos about me that should have stayed in the drafts because I'm finna make you look dumb twice. But starting with this one, number one, my stitches and duets are on and I usually have them set to be on automatically for whatever video I make. And sometimes they get turned off because the video is over a minute long, which admittedly is something that the guy who made the video I responded to could have had happen. The difference being I make sure all my videos are savable just in case duets and stuff get turned off and you have something to say to me, which is exactly how you made your video. I couldn't even save the first guy's video, which which means if I wanted to respond, I had to physically screen record it. So we start off with a failed gotcha. Next. Not to mention those were Democrats that seceded after the election of a Republican president and fought a war flying a particular flag that now appear at an insurrection that took place in support of a Republican president. My boy, Google is your friend. Google the Confederate flag and then show me where the actual Confederate flag appeared during the January 6th insurrection. Yeah, Google is your friend when you're doing, how do you say, me search over research. Because I wonder if maybe, just maybe, both of these flags were used at the same time. And maybe if you typed in something like, I don't know, Confederate battle flag instead of the real Confederate flag, then you'd find the flag that many people fly today and oh would you look at that the insurrection and while we were scrolling right there it showed a graphic of the many flags that the confederacy used the first one being the one that you showed and the second one being the battle flag that battle flag was then co-opted as a symbol of anti-civil rights when pro-segregation democrats in the south split off to form the dixiecrats due to them being upset that the democratic party was embracing civil rights it was also used as a form of intimidation from citizens councils in the south and um by the way the kkk and after all that it was that flag that was flown at that insurrection if we're gonna call january 6th an insurrection based on this definition, then you can also call every single violent Black Lives Matter rally an insurrection based on that definition. And those were all perpetrated by Democrats. <laughs> So one second they were BLM riots, but now because we're trying to play mental gymnastics, they were technically insurrections. Looking at that insurrection definition, a violent uprising against an authority or government. The January 6th insurrection was against the government, so that is an insurrection. Now if we're looking at the definition of riot, a violent disturbance of the peace by a crowd, seems like it fits a lot more with what you were describing with Black Lives Matter. But that insurrection definition also looks like it could. So what does it mean by authority? Because that seems kind of vague. Well, if we're looking at the legal definition, organized and usually violent act of revolt or rebellion against an established government or governing authority of a nation state or other political entity by a group of its citizens or subjects. A protest of police brutality that results in a riot is not an uprising against a nation state or governing body. So no, the BLM riots that happened like 6% of the time were not insurrections, but nice try though. Went on in your video to also cite the fact that white people in general had a higher average median income than black people and you said that that was because of generational trauma. Nope, I said it was a product of anti-black racism, not generational trauma. But you didn't mention that Asians had an even higher median net income than white people. And Asians literally were put in constant concentration camps within the last 75 years in the United States. Not all Asians, not even a majority. They were Japanese people, a subsect of Asians. It was for four years, not 300. It was 120,000, not six to seven million in the 18th century alone. And they received reparations. Black people did not. So it's not comparable. Stop using that trash talking point. You can catch the smoke again later direction was against the government. Okay, well, we could call it the Capitol riot. And since you said that the BLM protesters only protested against police brutality and the police and not the government, then what happens when the government calls in the National Guard? The National Guard is an extension of the government? Joe, this was so weak. Oh my God. Again, we're arguing definitions here, but I'd say what happened at the Capitol much more fits the definition of insurrection by legal standards than it does the definition of riot. But to answer your question, nothing happens. It's still not an insurrection. Do you know why, Joel? Because if we're reading the definition again, which you just conveniently misunderstood, an organized and usually violent act of revolt or rebellion against an established government or governing authority of a nation state or other political entity by a group of its citizens or subjects. The National Guard is not an established government. The National Guard is not a governing authority and it is not a political entity with citizens or subjects. The National Guard is a state-based military force that can also be folded in with the other armed forces in times of war. They are again not an established government and have no governing authority, which is literally exactly what can be said about the police except for the 
they're more local based and they can't be folded in with the rest of the military. But neither of them are an established government or have any governing authority. So a riot that the police are dealing with doesn't then turn into an insurrection because the National Guard is called in. It's about what the rebellion or revolt is happening against, not who's called to respond to the emergency. So no, the BLM riots that happened like 6% of the time. We're not insurrections, but nice try though. It was not 6% of the time. It was 100% of the time. 100% of violent BLM riots were violent BLM riots. I'm sorry, are we operating on a second grade understanding of the English language? Of course, 100% of the BLM riots were violent. Are you, if you actually, you know, listen to what I said, I said the BLM riots that happened 6% of the time. Because when it comes to the demonstrations as a whole, 96.3% involved no property damage and 97.7% involved no injuries. So I was even wrong. It's less than 6%. It was for four years, not 300. So it's not comparable. Stop using that trash talking point. Let's do some math. If America was founded in 1776 and slavery ended in 1865, is it possible for 300 years of slavery to exist? Yes, as soon as we realize that the people living in and developing the area that would become the United States didn't spawn there out of nowhere in 1776. That 300 year number comes from the fact that enslaved Africans were brought to what is now Florida in 1565. So when looking at slavery's effects on African Americans, it wouldn't make sense to start the clock in 1776 considering that the areas that would become the United States had slavery already and 1776 did not put an end to that slavery. It was still allowed by the government. So those effects would still carry over. It was 120,000, not six to seven million in the 18th century alone. That's not true either. In North America, the number of Africans that were actually brought here was only 388,000. Yeah, it was six to seven million to the new world. But if we're looking at North America alone, and we look at that 388,000 number, not only is that, again, more than the Japanese internment camps, not only is slavery not the same as internment, that article goes on to say, incredibly, most of the 42 million members of the African American community descended from this tiny group of less than half a million Africans. Because, oh yeah, I forgot, approximately 10 million slaves would end up living in the United States as a result of that original 338,000, contributing 410 billion hours of labor. Again, not comparable to Japanese internment at all. I'll see you at our debate 3.30 p.m. CST today. Stop encouraging and allowing people to believe that two parents aren't necessary in the household okay, and that a family right. is not an important right. youth right, for development. All right, Joel, I let you run with, with, a, with, a lot of, with a lot of shotgun points here, but I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna end it here. You seem to be oddly triggered by me mentioning that two-parent households would be the solution to the high crime rates in the African-American community. Could it be that you are unable to separate your personal emotions surrounding that statement and the facts? You're still on this. They know how good we can make things look when we clip them out of context. So I'm gonna play the full thing, and I want you to count how many times he switches topics. Because we've tried um, it before. And I can tell you what the demographics look like. Haven't. We haven't tried that before. Would, oh, wait, would you say that more white people voting is a bad thing? Is that what you think is going to happen? More white people are going to be able to vote? Whoa, that is, that is interesting framing. But I'm saying when you disproportionately have white people voting, like, by a legal by a legal reason, like the same thing that happened when we had poll taxes and everything, yeah, that's a bad, that's a big problem. White people tend to vote Republican, and minorities tend not to. Why is that? Uh, because minorities are very much uninformed. Oh, <laughs> Okay. Are you I saying hope. that they're informed? Huh? So tell me. Tell I me don't make broad loaded. You know I don't Joe make Biden. broad loaded statements about about. Okay. How like many that. black people do you know that voted for Joe Biden? Oh my lord, have mercy! What does this have to do with anything? Joe Biden authored the 1994 crime bill. No black person in their right mind should ever vote for him for anything. And you know what the Republican Party was doing? Trying to make that crime bill tougher. So if you're suggesting that this solution was to vote for the Republican in that instance, you're wrong. Bill Clinton was the president at the time. Yes, Bill Clinton and was. Yeah, and the entire- Newt Gingrich was in charge of the House of Representatives? Bill Clinton was the president at the time, yes, and Joe Biden had a big hand in writing it, yes, but I'm saying the entire U.S. Congress and most of America at the time was very tough on crime, everything, and the Republicans were not trying to be the, hey guys, maybe we shouldn't do this. Nope, Re Republicans are trying to push it further. So the solution was not either in that case. So you think being lax on crime, crime is, the, is the answer? Uh, that's another argument that I have not made that you've just shoved into my mouth. I'm not saying that being lax well, on crime Well, you said is, being but, tough on crime is yes, a bad that's thing. that's literally the what the era up. was called. It's literally been called the tough on crime 90s. And by tough on crime, I mean what they did was get, what, 60-something more penalties that could result in the— uh, or crimes that could result in the death penalty, expansion of private prisons, expansion of all these things that aren't actually doing anything to adjust the reason why crimes are being committed but just being punitive and punishment which is which has not like that's not the solution to actually like solving the institutional problems that lead to crime people to grow up and uh, stop encouraging and allowing people to believe that two parents aren't necessary in the household okay, now and that a family right. is not an important all right. Youth all right, Joel. for development all right Joel I let you run with with a, with a lot of with a lot of shotgun points here but I think I'm going to I'm going to end it here so you have not it. proven anything you How? change subjects every time I brought up a point you didn't like. Then, then. <laughs> oh boy, when you watch this back. <laughs>
Just stop. Well, let's talk about it. Got him. I don't see anything wrong with what he did there. He removed himself from a conversation he saw was going nowhere. Joel, leave me the hell alone. And maybe if you didn't send your followers to attack people that you disagreed with online, maybe you could have some productive conversations. You just seem to think that, oh, I'm going to get you with a gotcha. Why are you changing hearts? Are you changing minds? If that's not your point, what are you even out here doing? Hey, he didn't remove himself from a conversation. He removed me from being able to view anything he says in order to stop us from even having a conversation. Which, if that were to have happened, it would have been initiated by the video he made about me. Second, never have I once sent anybody to attack anybody, but that's the line you guys always go to. Not realizing that when you have fans, especially political ones, and you make a video calling someone out for their viewpoints, they will immediately flock to that person's video and bombard them no matter who you are. I've experienced the same thing, yet almost nobody has ever sent their fans to deliberately attack me. See, I do change people's hearts and minds, and I appreciate doing that, but I don't just cheer that on for the sake of it. You do have videos of you convincing people and changing their mind, but if everything you stand for is utter bullshit, I'm not gonna say, oh, but at least you changed someone's mind and you did it nicely. And for future reference, it's not the best look to involve yourself in a conversation that has nothing to do with you regarding having a conversation with another creator, considering that when we talked, um... Did giving out coronavirus checks during coronavirus help save jobs, or did it create a workplace shortage? What? You're saying that the checks that the government gave out created the workplace shortage, not the, you know, pandemic? Gee, you're done. Have a nice night. Leave me alone. Alone.